YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a topic that I hope will be very helpful to you as somebody who's been collecting Louis Vuitton for two years now. The recommendations I'm giving you are based on my learning experiences because I have made a few mistakes in building my collection and I don't want you to have to make the same mistakes. So I wanna offer advice to you on when I think it's best to buy pre-loved versus buying new. And I'll start with advice on what I would buy pre-loved um, and then what I would buy new and then when it depends. Sometimes it's a toss-up. Tip number one, discontinued items. You have to buy those pre-loved. You have no choice because they're discontinued. So my first piece of Vuitton, for example, was this bag right here. This is the Trevi GM. This bag, I always thought and still think is the most beautiful bag that Vuitton has ever made. I love this bag. I think it's feminine and gorgeous. And by the time I was ready to buy it, it was only available pre-loved because it had been discontinued. Um, when this bag was brand new, it was $2,500. When I was looking at them pre-loved, they went for around 1600 or so and when I bought this one I found a really good deal on it and got it for 14 something. Tip number two for buying pre-loved. Pre-loved prices tend to be cheaper than new. Now there are some exceptions. If an item is newly released on the pre-loved market it tends to be more expensive. If an item is in high demand it tends to be more expensive. If it's in low supply or if it's a limited edition item whether it's an old limited edition that's harder to find or a new one that's sold out and hard to find. So I have some examples of those for you. Here is a limited edition that's an older item. So this became hard to find because it was discontinued and it's limited edition and it's still in excellent quality. So the quality condition also have a lot to do with the price, of course. Uh, there's no wear to this piece anywhere. It's perfect. But these items are difficult to find, so they tend to be a little more expensive. You can still get deals on them. I don't know what the price on this was new, but the current keychains like this one, I think this was around 300 or two, two or 300 something. I don't remember now. So I try to figure out what they're selling for now, or I look around at what items like this are going for and then I look for the best price I can get. This is one of the things you would want to buy new is if there's a limited edition piece that you want, go get it as soon as it's released as long as you can afford to do so because these things sell out fast and then once they go to the pre-loved market, they're gonna be more expensive. If you look at these, this was two or 300 something, I don't remember. And if you look at these now on like fashion file, they're selling for at least $100 more than they were retail. So you're better off with something like this, buying it new, but you have to buy it right away before they sell out. And then things like luggage tags have been a hot commodity. Vuitton has made a big deal about selling these to people. They don't wanna do it anymore. So one of the only places you can get them unless you buy them with a bag is on the pre-loved market. And because they're such a hot commodity now, people are selling them for two, three or more times what they sell for at Vuitton. So you'd wanna be really careful about that. If you can get it in the store, get it in the store, but that's harder and harder and harder to do these days. You know, if you wanna get one of the pre-loved market, spend whatever you're willing to spend. I have been lucky to be able to get a few of these before they came too difficult to find. Um, there's still a couple I want, like there's this one, it's a, it's a luggage tag, but it's a limited edition, the Chapman Brothers pieces. And I know a lot of people hate those. I love them with the crazy looking scary lions and rhinos and elephants and the giraffe. I love those. And I really wanna get one of the Chapman Brothers luggage tags. I think I want the rhino. I think that's my favorite, but I just haven't been willing to spend $300 on a luggage tag. But then I have to remind myself too that I spent about that much on this thing that's just a, a charm too. And about that much on this one that's just a charm. So just because it's shaped like a luggage tag doesn't mean it's any different and it's a limited edition piece so they're hard to find and they're gonna be more expensive. So if I really want it, I just need to break down and get it. But that's probably not something I'll be adding anytime soon, to be honest. And that brings me to pieces like these that are classic pieces that a lot of people have. You see a lot of YouTubers with LV collections 
that these are staples in their collections. But because of this Vuitton, whatever they're doing with the canvas, whether it's a shortage, they're not discontinuing it completely, but they have really made it difficult to get a lot of the canvas pieces. These always seem to be sold out online. Every once in a while they pop up, but the prices on these brand new are significantly cheaper these days than the prices pre-loved. The pre-loved prices have skyrocketed. I will tell you that with the toiletries, check on the real real for these because they have had the lowest prices I found. I got this one at the real real before they were so difficult to find. I think I only paid $175 for it, which is well below retail. This one I found in Louis Vuitton and picked it up immediately because I knew they were getting so difficult to find. Happens to be a made in France piece too. So if you see something like that and you know you want it, you know it's hard to get, jump on it if you find it in the store or if you find a good price on one that's uh, pre-loved, jump on that too because it won't be there long. Reason number three you'd want to buy pre-loved rather than new is if you want your bag made in a particular place. So Vuitton makes their bags in France, Spain, Italy, and the United States. I think that's it. And if you want a bag that's made in a particular place, you don't really have that choice in the store because they have what they have. But on the pre-loved market, you have a lot of choices, depending on what you're looking for. Sometimes you don't have so many choices. Usually you'd have a lot of choices and you'd be able to find a bag that meets all of your criteria. Similar to that, reason number four to buy pre-loved is if you're looking for a bag that's made in a particular year. That of course you can't do in the store and the bags in the store tend to be made the same year you're buying it or the year previous, not usually older in my understanding. Um, if you're looking for a particular year, something that I learned recently, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I heard that date codes only started being put on Vuitton bags in 1980. So something prior to that, you're not gonna be able to find an item with a date code. I know a lot of people on the Facebook addicted Louis Vuitton group look for a Speedy, for example, made in their birth year or their kid's birth year so that they can buy that bag for themselves or that person and the only way you'd be able to find that is on the pre-loved market. Tip number five, most handbags I would recommend buying pre-loved because they're going to be less expensive and you'll be able to check the wear and tear because some wear better than others. Now we move to items I would recommend buying new. If you're looking for a piece of hardware, so for example, I have this Facetti's keychain. This is one of the mistakes in my collection. I should have bought this new but I bought it pre-loved to save $50. The reason I should have paid the extra $50 and purchased this new is because of the wear on the item. So I think you can see when you compare the gold on the LV to the metal on the clip, it's a little hard to see because it's shiny. The clip is more silver because the brass coating has worn off and that makes it look older to me. So look at the hardware on your items. If you're looking for hardware that has the brass and is not worn at all or doesn't have any scratches, you're probably going to be better off buying that piece new, especially with something that's all hardware like a keychain. Personally, I really wish I had just spent the extra $50 and got this new. My plan at some point is to sell this and buy a new one. But first I'm gonna check with Vuitton and see if they can replace the clip and if they would, how much that would be. Maybe it's less than 50, maybe not. But I'm even starting to get some wear on the corners of the LV. I know that'll happen eventually, but if I buy it new, at least I'll have it longer gold and I can be more careful with it myself. Along those lines, I come to point number seven, which is there are some items that pre-loved are only a little bit cheaper or around the same price as buying it new. From my experience, I would recommend spending that little bit of extra money and what what I mean by a little bit may be different for you, so you decide what works for you. But for me, I would say to spend the little extra money and buy it new. That way you have the store experience, you've got a new item. If there are any problems with it, you can take it back to them. Hopefully they will fix it. And there's no wear on the piece. One of the pieces I would recommend for that is the clay. This recommends for about $200. You can find a ton of them on the pre-loved market, but usually the hardware is scratched up or the hardware is tarnished. 
So spend the extra $25, whatever it may be, and buy a new one. The four and six key holders are the same thing. I don't have one of those because that item doesn't work for me, but those are something that's priced very near, near retail on the pre-loved market. So personally, I'd recommend just buying that new. The zippy coins in Canvas, especially the Monogram and Damier Aben, those tend to be priced right around retail too. So if you're looking at that item, I would recommend buying that new if you can get your hands on it. It's been a little hard to find lately, but if you can find one, probably better to buy that one new. Tip number eight, if you're looking for an item with no patina, now this one probably has a little bit because it's a few months old. If you want an item with brand new vachetta that has no patina and you want to work on the aging process yourself and take care of it yourself, then you would have to buy it new in most cases. There are times you can buy pre-loved bags that are pretty much brand new, but they're a little harder to find. They're usually more expensive because of the condition. Tip nine, if you want the store experience, of course you have to buy new because you have to go in the store. There is something to be said for the store experience. Now, people have different experiences when they go in the store. I've had different experiences with different people. Sometimes I go in, actually usually I go in and have a great experience. People are nice, but I have had a few bad experiences. One I talked about where I took in a luggage tag that turned out to be fake and I didn't know it. Um, that I can understand it being a bad experience. But one time I went in and asked about a vernis piece. It wasn't this piece, but I just wanted to show you an example of vernis. It's patent leather. Vernis is the French word, and I do believe I'm pronouncing it correctly because that's how I've heard knowledgeable people pronounce it on YouTube. And I asked one of the sales associates to see this. It was a clay, a coin purse that I was looking at in Vernie. He acted like he didn't know what I was talking about when I said Vernie, and he seemed to be French, so I would think that he would know that, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I tried pronouncing it a few different ways, and I finally said patent leather, and then he knew what I was talking about. So maybe it was just a misunderstanding, but I don't know. I had kind of a bad impression that day. Maybe it was all me, but you know. And then you hear people tell all kinds of stories and horror stories about how the associates in these high-end boutiques are rude to them. I've had that experience sometimes. Mostly I haven't. Um, maybe I've just been lucky, but when you have a good experience in the store, especially if you're making a purchase, it can be a great experience. I've never been offered champagne, but a lot of people have. I've seen people, I'm gonna ask about that next time I make a purchase too, I tell you what. I'm gonna have no qualms next time I go in to make a purchase about just asking for a glass of champagne. I've usually been offered sparkling water uh, or some kind of drink, but never been offered champagne. And if you get that, and sometimes, you know, if you, this won't be most of us, but sometimes people have a relationship with their sales associate where they buy pretty frequently throughout the year or they spend a lot of money and the sales associate gives them VIP gifts or gives them macarons. So you can have that experience, but I think that's more rare. It's not for most of us. Reason 10 to buy new, of course, you never have to guess the authenticity of an item like you do buying pre-loved. You have to be careful buying pre-loved to make sure you're not getting a fake or counterfeit piece. You then want to send photos to an authenticator who can look at your photos and authenticate it for you. Somebody who has a lot more experience than you do with authentication of these items because there are so many fakes out there and some of them are very convincing fakes. And if you buy new at the store, you don't have to worry about that. I've had many people comment on my channel that they only buy at the store because of that. Personally, that's not an issue for me. I think as long as you are careful about what you're doing, and especially if you have it authenticated by one or more other sources, that there is nothing at all with buying pre-loved. And all the things that I've purchased, I've only made one purchase that was not authentic and that was partly my fault for not researching the item well enough to know what I was looking at when I bought it. One of the big things that I would buy new rather than pre-loved are items that come with more than one piece. This is the example that I give all the time, the new model Neverfull that comes with the pouch. The reason you'd wanna buy this new rather than pre-loved is that if you want the pouch with the bag, and you buy it pre-loved, they're typically broken up and sold separately. And when you buy them separately, it comes out to be more expensive, sometimes several hundred dollars more expensive than if you had just purchased it in the store together. That's the reason I bought this item or these two items together. 
uh, new rather than pre-loved because it was actually cheaper. It made more financial sense to buy it new. Every once in a while, that's the case. And I enjoy finding those cases because it is fun to go in the store. Most of the time I buy pre-loved because I can't justify spending the, the money on a new piece when I can get it cheaper pre-loved and in great quality still. But I love those moments when it makes more sense to buy it in the store because then I can get the item and the store experience and that's fun. Now we'll move to the section where it depends on whether you would buy it pre-loved or new. I mentioned the new Vachetta and if you wanted that brand new white Vachetta that you would want to buy that new. But some people, and I'm one of these people, I prefer on most pieces Vachetta that's already that already has patina on it. For example, this Speedy, I wanted this pre-loved. A big part of that was the price because I knew I could get it cheaper pre-loved than new. But I also wanted something that already had some patina and a nice even patina because I'm a little scared of Vachetta. I still don't just don't have enough experience with it yet to be totally comfortable. I'm more and more comfortable with it. But if I have a brand new item with brand new Vachetta, I'm a little less likely to reach for it because I'm afraid of ruining it, then if I have a bag that already has some patina, then I'm more likely to reach for it because it already has some of that color on it and it might already have a few flaws on the bag like a pen mark inside or a little scratch somewhere. And sometimes for some people that makes it easier for you to use the bag so that you're not the one making the first little bit of damage to it. This is idea 12, price is an issue. So I mentioned with the clay, this is usually sold at or not very much below retail. There are lots of items like that. So it depends on your idea of price and savings and what you're willing to spend versus save on an item. For me, I've found that it's worth it to spend that little extra, an extra 25 or 50, or if it's a handbag, maybe even a couple hundred dollars to get the new bag rather than the pre-loved bag. But it depends on the bag, it depends on the item, it depends on a lot of things. So you have to figure that part out for yourself. I would say as someone who's very conscious of price, I have learned not to go just by price. I have made mistakes like that before. My Trevi that I mentioned, I mentioned that at the time that I bought this, most of the pre-loved Trevis were going for $1,600 and I got this for $1,400. This is the reason. The pleating is all messed up. I didn't realize that because I'd never seen one of these in person. I mean, they had a picture of the bag and it wasn't quite this messed up when I bought it. And I thought, well, I can fix that. I can reshape it. I have tried so many things and I've not been able to reshape it. So. For me, I've learned the hard way that I should have spent the extra $200 and got one in better condition. This is something that I've thought of selling. It's something I've thought of selling and then replacing with a better quality item um, or one that doesn't have that condition issue. I still don't know exactly what I wanna do with this because it's not a bag I use very often, partly because of that, partly for other reasons, but that's something to keep in mind. Just don't let price be your only factor. Think about other things. That leads me to point 13, which is quality. So consider the quality like I failed to do on the Trevi bag there. And consider the quality like I failed to do here with this silver buckle. I should have just spent the extra money on that and purchased it brand new. I don't have a Speedy 30 with a Vachetta to show you, like the monogram bags, but one of the things that I think a lot of people do when they're looking for a pre-loved Speedy, for example, which is one of the most popular bags, or the most popular bag probably, is they'll pay attention to the price and less to the patina. And, you know, the patina on the bags can get really dark and maybe they'll go for a really cheap bag, sacrifice some quality for the price, right? My suggestion, my recommendation would be not to do that. Figure out what quality you want and then find a good price for it. Do a bunch of research, look at a lot of places. If you're finding that it's out of your reach, save a little more and get what you want. Having made mistakes in my collection as I've built it, especially at the beginning, one of the things that I have learned over time is it is worth it with these bags to spend a little extra to get better quality or to get the quality that you really want because these things last forever and you can wait a little longer. You can wait another couple of weeks or months or a year or two if that's what it takes 
um, to get the bag that you really want and you'll be happier with the bag you'll be happier with yourself and I think I was talking about that and I said uh, quality I meant condition for quality what I wanted to say was that one of the things that you can it, it depends on what you're doing there's some items that we know from watching videos seeing other people's experiences that some items have quality issues uh, known quality issues so there are some bags I, I don't have my um, to rent out to show you because I just thought about this didn't get it out ahead of time but the bottom corners are the canvas is folded over there are some bags the to rent I think the graceful maybe has had an issue with the canvas cracking there and that's a known issue there are some items like the sunglasses case. I have not had this issue on mine. I've been lucky with it. But the edge here, the glazing where it bends, has been a problem where the glazing will peel. I've seen other sunglass cases for sale since I bought this one. And I always look at that corners and everyone I've seen has been messed up there. I don't know why mine is good and others haven't been. When you're shopping the pre-loved market and you're doing your research on YouTube and whatever other places you look at, you can find a particular item you're interested in, you can find information about it, good and bad, and figure out what issues to look for. And then you can figure out on the pre-loved market if the item that you're looking at has those issues or not. And that's something that you might be willing to deal with and try to get it repaired by Vuitton or it might be something that you'd live with or it might be something that's not acceptable to you so you can find one that doesn't have those issues. Now if you know about a known issue another idea is not to buy it pre-loved but to buy it from the store so that if you buy an item and it has those issues you can get the store to replace it for you hopefully or repair it for you sometimes they're good about that sometimes they argue about that sometimes they repair your item and the repaired item has the same issue over and over again sometimes they give you a new item and it has the same issue there's no right answer there but depending on what you prefer you might go new, you might go pre-loved with an item that has an issue like that. Those are my top 15 tips or recommendations for when to buy new, when to buy pre-loved, when to juggle that idea. I know I didn't do a very good job of numbering those. I apologize. It wasn't in the plan originally. I kind of threw that in at the last minute. But I hope this was helpful. I feel like it's, it probably would be, which is why I wanted to do this video, because I feel like I have learned a lot in the process and sometimes I've learned the hard way over the two years I've been collecting so far. If you have any tips about when to buy new or pre-loved that you think I missed and you want to add that to help other people below, please do that in the comment section. And then like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post a new video. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.